All right, so today Joe delivered a speech about building bridges after the speech he gave earlier in the week. Tuesday, comparing all of his political opponents to Bull Connor, George Wallace, Jefferson Davis, while also referring to tens of millions of Americans as domestic enemies. Wow, take a look. I know where I stand. I will not yield. I will not flinch. I will defend the right to vote, our democracy against all enemies, foreign and, yes, domestic. So I ask every elected official in America, how do you want to be remembered? At consequential moments in history, they present a choice. Do you want to be the side, on the side of Dr. King or George Wallace? Do you want to be on the side of John Lewis or Bull Connor? Do you want to be on the side of Abraham Lincoln or Jefferson Davis? This is the moment to decide. Those remarks were so unhinged that even Joe's fellow Democrats, they were put off. Even Dick Durbin said that Biden went too far. Nancy Pelosi criticized Joe for evoking Bull Connor and Strom Thurmond. And former Congresswoman and Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard tweeted, quote, Hillary calling tens of millions of Americans deplorables was divisive and disgusting. Biden has gone further, calling those that disagree with his actions and policies domestic enemies, traitors, racists. And Biden did promise to unite us, but he is doing all he can to divide us. Now, tonight it appears that the only way Joe Biden is uniting Americans is against Joe Biden. And former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard uh, joins us with more. Just give your overall perception of not only the speech, but this week and this year. We're, we're just a few days away from the one-year anniversary since he was inaugurated. Yeah, Sean, you know, I think there were so many people across the country, those who voted for Joe Biden, those who did not for, vote for Joe Biden, who had high hopes that he would carry out his promise, that he would be the president for all Americans, showing respect for those who agreed with him or disagreed with him. And unfortunately, the opposite is true. Uh, not only has he not carried out on that promise, he is literally doing the exact opposite, rapidly carrying our country uh, in, in the wrong direction, tearing us apart, pouring fuel on the flames of divisiveness. And it, it just, I mean, it really makes me wonder how we can go through three more years of this and still come out the other end with the possibility of being able to come together again as Americans, as the United States of America. When you look at, for example, we ran out of tests, we ran out of monoclonal antibodies, we ran out of antivirals, uh, inflation a 40-year high, energy $85 a barrel, he's begging OPEC and Russia to produce more, he inherited energy independence, his vaccine mandate fell apart. Um, the average American now, the inflation uh, for every American family is about $5,000 per family. It is impacting everybody, but almost a buck fifty more a gallon for gas, a thousand dollars more to heat your home this year. Uh, you know, everything we buy in every store is costing more, although bare shelves Biden is trending because it's everywhere. Um, do you see as a Democrat or any of these policies working? Am I missing something that's successful? Well, what I see is people are struggling, and you can understand how people are frustrated and even angry at the fact that our government is failing us. And one of the most disturbing things that I see coming out of this administration is how President Joe Biden has his attorney general targeting Americans as domestic terrorists for uh, being, quote, unquote, anti-authority. And what is so extremely dangerous about this, Sean, is that the president of the United States is the authority here in America. And so if our president is targeting Americans for being, quote, unquote, anti-authority, what they're really saying is, you are an enemy of the state if you are against the president or his policies. Uh, this is the foundation of authoritarianism. Uh, and it's it, the message that is received by people at home is, if you're going to target me for being against your policies as the president, uh, there will be consequences, and therefore, what are people to do? Shut up, step back, and fall in line. And, and this, this is unacceptable in our democracy and must not go unchecked. The one thing, he's never allowed Republicans even in the room. 
Republicans were never included in Build Back Better. Republicans were never in included in voter integrity measures. My measures I'd like to see so we can have confidence in results and integrity in the process are simple. Voter ID, signature verification. I think chain of custody controls so we make sure nobody can tamper with mail-in ballots. Um, I think we need updated voter rolls, and I think we need partisan observers, all sides, get to watch the vote count up close, start to finish. And I think we'll have more confidence in results. I don't think illegal immigrants should be allowed to vote either. Is there anything wrong with any of those measures in your view that I mentioned, or would you include some or, or take some away? I, I think the point there, Sean, is that the fact that there were not leaders, members of both parties in the room crafting this legislation is exactly the problem. So there should be no surprise why there is partisan opposition to it. Um, whether or not everybody would agree on all of those things, or even, hey, I think there's opportunity to, to come to agreement on 80 percent of those things and still be able to move us forward uh, as, a, as a country. But that's the problem. And, and there are many different examples, unfortunately, under this administration, where they've chosen to take a very partisan approach. And then even though they're leaving out Republicans from the, the crafting table, the negotiating table, then they say, well, how dare you not support our bill that we wrote without any of your input, any discussion, any respect or consideration? And I mean, this is, this is transparent. This is transparent. The American people see what's happening, I think, and, and again, are so dissatisfied by it. All right. Um, we always love having you on. Thank you, Tulsi Gabbard. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's uh, refreshing to hear at times somebody independent minded. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.